Cosmos. Uh, we're Cosmos, and welcome back if you are joining us uh, from the uh, main episode live. Um, we have switched drinks. What are you drinking now, Mike? We don't <laughs> ever talk about our drinks for the hangover. I thought maybe we just I would, we could improv some stuff off the top of our heads. No, I. This is a <laughs> Moscow Mule. Uh, basically, <laughs> is what uh-huh. it is. Um, I ain't come up with a fancy name. Uh-huh. Um, but um, it is uh, it's a Moscow Mule, but I am using blood orange uh, ginger beer, mm-hmm. which um, I just happened to discover at, yeah, at the good. grocery store. Um, and of course, it's vodka. Nice. Right? That goes with it. And so, um, yeah, what do you got? Uh, <laughs> I'll shut off this room. Uh, I am uh, drinking uh, Death by Black Hole. And it is. Oh, um, shit, you came up with a name. All right, well, you know, you can't tell. This is Blue Senate right here. <laughs> This is the red wave. <laughs> yeah. Black as their hearts. Uh, no, it's just a it's a dragon's milk. Uh, oh God, I gotta look at it. A dragon's milk a bourbon barrel aged stout. Um, I am apparently becoming a bit of your a, dad. A, <laughs> Minus a Republicanism. A bit of a beer drinker. Um, and I am surprisingly finding dark beers that I like, where normally I'm not a dark beer I just person, can't do the beer. This sounds good. Um, I just... Okay, it, um, just so you know, the ginger beer is not like true beer. It's just... I don't really know what it is. It's but, like a ginger, ginger soda. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't have any alcohol in it. You add the alcohol. Um, but, but I am coming up. With my um, my Thanksgiving, um, uh, yes, our, the the Davis and George Thanksgiving cocktail menu. Yes, and so um, we, oh, a, you should we should think do of I need to add a beer? Creative menu name suggestions, everyone. Do I need to add beer oh, to it? Good and chocolate cake. No, no. no yeah, and no, so this is the this is your your creation of cocktails um, menu. And we actually have a couple that are on there already mm-hmm. that um, I, th- I think are going to be pretty good. And and we tested one out. I should say, like, I tested one out. Uh, Liz had a couple of sips of it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I... <laughs> which one I have to jack Yeah, no. Um, uh, I... One could be the anxiety. Be- uh, I know, right? One could be the macho man. <laughs> One can be the too good for this drink, and then oh, oh, can be a, a shot. shot. Yes. yes. Uh, oh, I should I should put some shots on there. Oh yeah, like the uh, the donut one, raspberry donut that we do for. Uh, yeah, but I have to give it a name. Well, yeah. Maybe some sort of cranberry <laughs> sauce name, but um, but we did test out um, this uh, um, this maple syrup old fashioned. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> It's my new favorite prior, old fashions. Prior to the podcast. It's my new favorite old fashions. Let me just say, don't pregame prior to the podcast. No. You... <laughs> but, I, but you know, the thing is, I really wanted to see uh, if it would work. Black, what could be a black jello shot? Hey. Oh, shit. Now I got to. I got to see if I can make something like that happen. Yeah. And have it not taste like black licorice. Oh. Although, that would be fitting. <laughs> Ugh. It's spicy. I hate black li- licorice, though. It's a feisty flavor. No, but we love Poe, so we don't want to do anything we hate. Because we love Poe. No, we... Anyway, we... Poe, for oh, those of you, Poe is Katie's cat. <laughs> and it has murder eyes. And is all black with the most gorgeous, like, yellow eyes. They're murder eyes, is what they oh, are. Oh, my God. She just disappears into the darkness, and all you see are these eyes. Orbs. Still blackberry, words. yeah, blackberry. Yeah, that's a good idea, mom. Oh, Poe's a beautiful cat. No, oh, it's very, very beautiful cat. Yeah, I love seeing our cats together. <laughs> Poe is starting to tolerate winter, and winter just wants to be friends. <laughs> and they have the little, they do a little paw. Yeah, and it's just like you know, there's paw. like nobody is gonna get hurt. No, <laughs> oh, although per, oh, no Poe, could, Poe, Poe could cut. Cut a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and she has. Not. Wait a minute, what? I, well, like, I, not that. I mean, Poe could, 
Poe is scratched like Katie. So, but then okay, I, I realized then that it implied to, that Katie, I was calling Katie a bitch, that. and that's not what I was. That's she gets me. She understands. Okay, moving on. <sighs> See, she's fine. <sighs> All right. Anyway. This show is about astronomy things. We got excited about stuff that then you, you were like, oh, this is Hangover, and then we had to get back to the main show, but I can't remember what it was now at this point. But it was in the stars or meteor shower section? Maybe. I don't, I don't remember. I don't know. This is, this is how the, the Hangover this works. This is how the Hangover works, exactly. So, I mean, we can talk politics. That was big news for us. Oh, my gosh. It's too early in the hangover. And since, uh, and since Italy is, you know, part of America, because the rest of the world is part of America, I'm, I'm sure that Federico... they have the same colors this. in their flag? <laughs> what? Because they have the same color in their flag? Oh. <laughs> no, sort of. Primary uh, yeah. colors? Yeah. <laughs> uh. I think they have... They have a green in their flag? I think they might have green in their flag. Uh, Federico, if you're still with us, what's in your flag? Because we oh no, it's green, white, and red. Because yeah. it's Italian. But <laughs> but the Irish have the same thing, but it's in a different no, way. No, Irish have orange. It's it's green, white, yeah. and orange. Oh. oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh this is the <laughs> this is the portion of the show where we try to figure out country flags. <laughs> And show our ignorance as Americans. Green, white, and red. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah. So, all right, cool. Sorry that we. I'm sorry, like, Federico. I had to think of pizza to get your colors. Oh, wow. I was going to say sorry like that we lumped you in with Ireland. <laughs> Ireland's good. Ireland's fine. They both have great fun accents to American ears. You think this one cracker will absorb all the It's going to make a lot of noise alcohol. in the microphone. No. It's going to make a lot of. I'm just gonna put it back. Okay, we have Brits, everybody. We, have, we needed a apparently the uh, the veggie platter that I made of broccoli, red bell pepper, carrots, uh, and celery uh, was not enough padding in the tummy for the alcohol. No, I shouldn't have pre-gained, pre-gained but I really wanted to taste that maple old fashioned. Uh huh. I know um, that's understandable, and it was worth it. It's gonna be on the menu. Yeah, we're gonna be drunk Eldening later, so. Yeah, um, we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna. Um, we we found out that we can have multiple characters in Elden Ring, and it took us like the. Well, I, mean, I knew we could. I was oh, pretty you sure. See, we could, yeah. I I have always been like we just can only have one. I you can just, only create one character in the games and of there, video. And there was no like reason uh-huh. as to why I thought that. I was like, but surely there can only just be one. One hate, character. Uh, if we uh, if we move to to Oregon um, and we're close enough to Katie and Adam, Katie, uh, I think it would be fun if we got in on your D and D game. But I know that's with other of your close friends. But just let, uh, if you need new characters and we're in the area, we're putting that out there that we'd be interested. And I made that decision for you. But you never played it. I never. <laughs> I know there's a funny dice that has twenty <laughs> sides. <sighs> <laughs> anyway, um, okay. Speaking of, uh, uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> D and D one shot. Get us in. Get us into the in crowd. The in the D N D. Oh, you crowd. need to make some. Oh, we got to get to Jack. Um, you need to make some garlic mozzarella pull apart bread to <laughs> Jack. I don't know what kind of masters of cuisine you think we are, but we are not you. Oh. What? But oh. that sounds amazing. Oh, stop it. Okay, Liz does not give herself enough credit. She does not. I saw the recipes I find online. The The only reason why Liz might have to pull my hair back <laughs> tonight is that, um, but I, I, the only reason why is because I really wanted to taste the maple old fashioned. Yeah. And the reason why is because Monday, really through Thursday night, we do not touch the stuff. It is <laughs> we rare. don't touch it. <laughs> it. It is rare that we actually have drinks, you know, Monday through Thursday. We just started weekend binge drinkers. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, Jackie, you should write a cookbook. Yeah, um, you really should. Oh, two biscuits. Ooh, I, you know. Two biscuits. I can do some two biscuits. 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> make a pop. Uh, all right. Yeah, but there's, but part of the pop is your reaction to the pop. You get scared because you know and, it's, it's like it's, it's a jack in the box. And it's everybody. It's everybody. And you go, oh, even though and, you're trying. You know, <gasps> you you have the knife or whatever it is. You're you're pushing you're into it. Push right in that. You're pushing so into it. So you know it's gonna happen. Yeah, you don't see. It. Occasionally they really explode. So you're, like, you're like, oh, like, what? Is it gonna be me this time? <laughs> Will this be? <laughs> what what do I put in my tombstone? That's funny for uh, Pillsbury Doughboy death. Oh yeah. So like, um, I'm reading this book uh-huh. on mixology. Oh, okay. yeah. And so I, I've never noticed this, but it makes sense. But it's always, to me, it was just always naturally just the way that you grab the shaker. Uh-huh. And um, it is a certain way that you do it. Uh-huh. Um, so the, the larger part mm-hmm. is towards whoever's getting the drink mm-hmm. so that if it does explode, it explodes onto you. Which, by the way, those, which, um, those, um, drinks that we had with gin drink with the, uh, with the egg, the egg actually makes it build up some pressure, air Mm -hmm. pressure in it. And so there is like, you do have to release the air and then shake it again. Uh But if you didn't, it it would explode all over you. And so it's kind of cool. It's interesting. It's Science. Yeah, it, it really is science and, and chemistry and all yeah. that. And it's it, it's a fun read. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I'm not going to remember 90% of this, but, you know, whatever. I, I, I might write down, like, the, um, like, there's a hot toddy uh, recipe Ooh. that I want to add to the Thanksgiving uh-huh. menu. Um, and, and so, having said that, I have not actually read. I'm into a hot toddy. Well, it sounds fun. It sounds, uh-huh. it sounds Thanksgiving-y. Well, yeah. So, Warm by the fire. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the I'm fireplace. Excited. I'm excited. I'm excited for it. I'm... Katie's excited about Hot Toddy. Uh, well, it definitely has to be on the menu now. Uh, oh, oh, see? Okay. We're, the, Dav- <laughs> the Davison girls, the Davison women are into it. Have you Davison had one to know that you're in it? Yeah, I made a Hot Toddy. Oh, okay. I made a Hot Toddy because I got my teas. It's tea season. I'm excited. It's tea season. I've been drinking my teas. During the day and before bed, I got my before bed teas and I got my during the day teas. Um, I don't have an eclectic repertoire of teas uh, like uh, one Jack, but <laughs> they're just the store bought what I can find that looks good. <laughs> well, your mom has a Earl Grey. Um, yes, I, I'm excited. Hot. I'm excited, Mom. You have that Earl Grey with the lavender because I'm excited to have that when when I'm there. Anyway, <laughs> um, this is just. Pure hangover. This is right? not, yeah, I keep trying to, like, okay, let's talk. Okay, all right, go ahead, go ahead. Back to astronomy. I will be quiet. I mean, it was just a high in the sky, so it's kind yeah, of like you're. I'll be quiet. All right, uh, let's talk. Let's do one of Brandon's, uh, no, we're not making the turkey recipe. Uh, that but I sent. we should make it a Cornish in this week. Because we talked Morning. about it last night. Well, we have to get through our meal okay. boxes. We're going to be Anyway, anyway go, ahead. go ahead. Um, okay. Uh, Brandon question. It's a Brandon question. Mm-hmm. Um, is Artemis going to launch? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, uh, they've had, what, a month? Couple months and a half to get our shit together, but then a hurricane to figure has out. come and been like, "Hey, <laughs> yeah, but oh, oh but I, they that had was it a few on. Days. They had it. Okay, by the way, uh, Artemis is rated for like eighty-five mile per hour winds, and the hurricane had it over a hundred mile per hour winds. Um, so they have to. <laughs> oh, but they, but I think they, I think they said it was okay. They, they said it was okay. I knew I it was like the last thing okay. I read was like they're gonna check it out, <laughs> and I was um, like, oh. Okay. Well, I know what happened to our fence I, with like 50 miles per hour wind. So, so I do think it's going to launch. Mm-hmm. Uh, the question isn't really Ian. Um, the question is, you know, oh, the issues that they have. When? <laughs> uh, you take a drink. Okay. I mean, no, Look, right. I'm going to do our drink button. We haven't done it yet. Um, you know, I, I actually feel... Okay, so there are a lot of planetariums that have wanted to make 
um, you know, events of this mm -hmm. where, hey, we watch, we're going to do a launch party, our return to the moon. Yeah. But. It's a little hard to do that when, <laughs> with this kind of thing versus a transit of Venus. <laughs> yeah. NASA doesn't give a shit about your launch party. <laughs> Nobody cares about your events. Um, NASA does not want, they don't want things Artemis to explode. To explode. <laughs> and so this is the first launch of Artemis. And like Brandon has said, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it was just to us or here within Cosmos Cosmos, but um, he said that, you know, they're going to be a little bit more uh, conservative with mm -hmm. this. Yeah, they've spent a lot of money, so yeah. it makes sense to be a little more conservative. And they don't, they, the last thing that they want is for it to explode. The... The the downside to this is is that you know Joe Blow down the street is gonna be like, well, Artemis didn't launch. This is just another. Oh, this, is a waste of my this is just another reason why yeah. NASA shouldn't get Maybe no they money. Maybe they should have that Elon character. Yeah, let's guy. have let's have Elon Musk do this. Well, you know, uh, whatever. <laughs> you, you know, NASA spent a lot of money into this. I, I do think it's going to launch. I, I really hope. I'm, believe it or not, folks, He's I am an optimist. an optimist. He's an optimist. I, I really am an optimist, and I think it's going to launch. I um, pest to your oct. You what? I'm, your, I'm the pest to your oct. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So, what's going <laughs> to happen on the 15th? Well, for us, it's the 15th. We're going to stay up real late. <laughs> yeah, for us. And for your mom and sister, for Katie, it is that it's going to be on the is 15th. Is that a week of us to wake up for, maybe, maybe for early? For Dak, it's 12, something in the morning. For, uh, for Federico, it's 7 in the morning. But anyway, I'm with you there, mom. Um, we're going to be up playing Elden Ring and when it when it goes up. He's like, woohoo, went up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll, 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 we will watch it. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is that like maybe three weeks later, watch a splashdown um, of it hitting the Pacific or wherever it's going to hit. Um, and most likely the Pacific because it's bigger. Um, and <laughs> it's a bigger target. Go where there's the least chance of hitting land. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm i joking about this, but to be honest, this is a big thing. Take that Atlantic. <laughs> this is... This is this is a really big thing. The last time we went to the moon, we'll talk about it in a, in a few weeks. Apollo 17. In the 70s? 1972. I mean. There was only <laughs> in all of the, It's right there. Yeah. 240,000 miles away. In all it's of. It's right there. <laughs> in all of the history of, the, of humanity. Mm -hmm. What? Let's let's in go. All of human history. Yeah, all of human all, history. What is it? There is a several three, hundred thousand years. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, there is a three-year window where three and a half. <laughs> let's give them credit. Three and a half window. <laughs> Our species is that where we went to the moon. Our closest neighbor in space, and we have not been back That's, since. I in mean, fifty if, years if physically. Physically, I mean, we sent robots in our stead. Right, but at this point, it is it's been fifty years yeah, since we have sent a manned mission um to the moon. Okay, at this think, point, we should have some a sort of colony. <laughs> well, I, a base. you know what? A base. A base. Let's let's not even be grand about this and say a colony. Let's just say a little base. Okay. That like ISS on over. the moon that maybe has 10, 15, 20 people on it. That are doing science. That's and, a lot of people. Been yeah, hanging but out on the moon. I, uh, been there, done that. That is such. Uh, that was the well. No, it was we beat the Russians. All right, shut it down, boys. We did it. Yeah, I just <laughs> Cold War is over now. The space Cold War is over. I, I uh, no one cares about space exploration anymore. You know, I. I know your mom, and I know I know how she's saying this. Yeah, she's not saying it as a. <laughs> um, and so I just hate that phrase when it comes to things like this. Been there, done that. It's such a, and I say this as completely an MTV generation person. It is so MTV MTV generation. What's what's that? 
where it That's is MTV. where it is life is in three minute clips yeah. and been there done that we did kajagugu let's move on to culture club at this point and then move on to the next video music videos on the tv <laughs> yeah <laughs> where are music videos now youtube I don't, are there music videos there. still where yeah. does one find these videos of music <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's in the Spotify, but it's not even a video. Um, yeah, but, you know, been there, done that. It is such... <sighs> Just, like, <laughs> so American. <laughs> it really is American, but it's not It's not just American. It yeah. really is... It really is seeing the world in a three-minute clip. Mm -hmm. And it is... Well, you know that our attention spans nowadays, right? <laughs> Exactly. Thank you, MTV, which I fucking love. I I remember. Okay, as as a kid, um, well, I don't know. As, as a kid, um, I my parents. MTV was the best back in right. the day. Okay, so when it was actually music television. Right. Uh, my parents did not. They didn't do this. My parents were very liberal and let me watch a shit ton of anything I wanted to watch, really, basically. Okay, so <laughs> my, parents, <laughs> my parents, my parents, Rick and Glenda George. You don't need to say their names on Everybody knows live them TV. <laughs> I love them so much. Mm -hmm. You know, I really do. Uh, but they are, they're very conservative. And so MTV was not a thing. Yeah, you're an outcast of the South. I am an outcast of the South. Um, but anyway, when I would go up to Rochester, New York, which is where some of my family is located, um, they did have MTV. And I would sit there, like, I would get a year's worth of viewing of MTV while I was there for two you check weeks. check out the Headbangers Ball? Um, Headbangers Ball? Does it go midnight, Headbangers Ball? Maybe 10 p.m. and then midnight? <laughs> And no. then it became like two AM. Yeah. Um but <laughs> well, the um, real world was but on that all is day. where that is where I got, you know, my MTV. It was up in Rochester, New York. And that's so, where I got the majority of exposure to the music I was, I was exposed to was on MTV and watching it throughout the day. Oh, but it's late at night though where you get the real well, stuff. Well no, but I so, mean in the early nineties, you know, and it would be like because of like Nirvana was popular, Metallica was popular. You know, I'd see Pantera occasionally during. The, you know, um, yeah, okay. I mean, but then also like it was, you know, uh, you know, like the Snoop Dogs and the Dre's and you know stuff that I don't really listen to now, but I listened to a variety of music. And when I was in elementary school, thanks to MTV, because I would watch music videos right. all day. Right. And, it and would I introduce you to it. Yeah, I was exposed to a lot of stuff that I so, wouldn't have normally been exposed to. Yeah. And so then I would just end up going MTV, one way the spectrum. But. MTV and the certain friends is the reason why I got into punk. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it it moves you. Like, like I know that I there was one time. All right, so... How do we get off of space It now? doesn't matter. When Brandon comes over, we'll occasionally play, like, golf with friends. And, yeah, we rotate through Spotify. And we rotate through through music. And um, and so there was one time where I basically just introduced this. And I said, this is the song that just basically... I, I listened to this song, and it just sucked me in like a black hole into uh into punk and it was black flags my war and my war and the yeah. only reason i know that is because of him yeah and you actually said i could yell it like really well oh yeah you can do a good punk yell um and yeah. so but that that is because if you stay up late enough with mt back in the day oh, yeah you get mtv uh, yeah yeah, and so, and now, you know, to quote in effects, when did punk become so safe? Um, yeah, but back in the day, you know, Keith Levine and The Clash. You know, a lot of people like, you know, The Clash are like, you know, um, 
uh, rock the Casbah, which is a very like pop, um, poppy kind of thing. Rock the Casbah. Yeah, and you know all this kind of stuff, but the Clash is very influential to UK punk. Not so much like uh, like what I would consider American punk, which is kind of like New York, which is the Ramones, mm-hmm. and then you have like uh, West Coast. The very this is the original East Coast versus West Coast, but. The West Coast would be like Black Flag and the Circle Jerk came out of that, Minor mm-hmm. Threat, mm-hmm. Um, the Germs, mm-hmm. um, and, and things like that. One could argue that Nirvana was punk. Nirvana is, was punk. They, so, so punk kind of died in, in the mid 80s. In the mid 80s. Mm-hmm. But, it, but it came back in, in a more plaid version. In a very a more, I'm sorry, more flannel version. More, yeah. Thank you, Pacific Northwest. <laughs> and so it was. Um, it didn't really just. It didn't go away, mm-hmm. but um, but it well, did. Well, bands like Nirvana and and that were hugely inspired by the punk scene and were oh. involved in the punk scene, like Pat from the Foo Fighters. Yeah, Pat Smear. Yeah, Germs. Yeah, and the germs, and yeah, you know, and, they were all inspired by that punk. Yeah, scene. and so like if if the offspring, if you were to go to an offspring uh, concert um, today, Dexter, um, mm-hmm. who's the lead singer, he he has a black flag. Give it to me, baby. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Um, he actually has a black flag. You're pretty flag. Pin that okay <laughs> that he actually wears um, uh-huh. as an homage mm-hmm. to. You know his inspirations, and so the Ramones, the Clash, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna go far as far to say that even for like uh, you know uh, Black Flag and the Germs, who are really like skater punk, kind of a punk sound. Okay, all right. That the Clash is going to be an influence. Skater, that's not uh, Sum Forty One. No, no. Just that's God. <laughs> Fucking no. <laughs> I'm no. sorry, that was 2000 skater punk. No. They're... Oh, skater pop punk. <laughs> you know, if you're wearing pads, that's not fucking skater punk. But There's if, no if pads I were to get a skateboard, I'd wear Meanwhile, pads. Meanwhile, Tony Hawk's like, wear a fucking helmet. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, he's hit his head quite a bit. But, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, the Clash was a real influence uh at least on uk punk um because like keith levine um he was he was a um a founding member of the class Mm -hmm. but he also worked with johnny rotten with um ptl um and um and ptl is a little bit more experimental um public image p uh, pil pil i'm sorry public Public Image Limited, um, okay. and um, I actually saw PIL. Um, they opened for NXS. Uh-huh. Um, um, I went to Atlanta to see them um, play, and um, uh, uh, NXS stopped the show because the fire marshal fire marshal stopped the show. But PIL opened, and it was so cool to see Johnny Rotten. And you know, I, Johnny Rod Johnny Rotten. Is a poser right now. He voted for Trump. <clears throat> because he voted for Trump. Both times. Two times. Not even. And was just... on the mass Singer on Fox. And I completely understand the punk mentality on this. What'd you say? I said, and was on the mass Singer on Fox. <laughs> I understand. But why did he do it? He did it for his wife. That's true. He did. That's um, sweet. I understand the punk mentality of it is that, you know, the, the thought that, that Trump will... Um, you know, Mm-mm. um, you know, stir things up. Mm-mm. That's not the kind of stirring you want. That's you know, Trump. Trump is not a punk. He's not going. No. He's an he's asshole. A spoiled, There's a difference. Rich little boy with a daddy that never loved him. <laughs> yeah, and so there is a difference between a punk and an asshole, and Trump is an asshole. Uh, yes. And, but, uh, okay. Yes. So. So Trump was never going to stir things up. No. Not ever. No, he's going to make the swamp swampier. Yeah, yeah, because it is in his best interest. With a lot more tan and grease. It is in his best interest to keep it as is. Because, to be honest, 
the political landscape in the United States is geared towards rich people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want to bring this back somehow? I have no idea how to bring this back. Um, I, I, what I was going to say, though, is that what's interesting, though, is that I really was never exposed to, like, punk punk until I met you. I mean, my extent of punk, which I was never really into and was kind of like a people I was friends with but didn't, like, hung out with occasionally, but, I like, was associated with my core group of friends, but adjacent in a way like it was like green day so it was like you know pop punk but even though green day did have its roots in the bay area yeah yeah yeah, but um and you know i mean hey if (laughs) you make it you make it take that fucking money like you know Mm -hmm. you're doing it (laughs) you don't want to starve on the streets for your life you know just making music you know you want to make the music make the content you want with the funds that can back it you know so i i don't see you know, when people are calling people sellouts and everything, it's like, what do you think they're doing this for to reach a, an, a worldwide audience? Like, you know, just because they're making money and are mainly ha- mainstream, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're selling out in any way. They just now have the funds to support themselves and to then go on other creative ventures and do the things they want to do. Yeah. You know, although yes, studio recordings might sound a little bit more polished and not <laughs> polished punk, not polished. Cause let's be honest, uh, the, the quality of musicianship between punk and say metal artists is some people know how to play guitars. The metal has uh, punks just st- streaming a bunch of chords right. in rapid succession and then yelling. Well, um, the whole <laughs> idea behind punk Okay. Well, okay. no, no, no. Okay. But let me bring this just back a little bit because it's, it's, uh, whereas like I didn't, I don't think that punk was really featured a lot on MTV because that was my, that was where I got a lot of my influences and my exposure to things. And I didn't see Sex Pistols. I didn't see, right. you know, these more underground punk, punk bands. You know, it's like I saw Metallica and I saw Nirvana and I mm-hmm. saw Green Day and I saw Beastie Boys and I saw the Jacksons. Uh and I saw, you know, um Tool actually. And like I remember a weird ass claymation tool music video. Um and my I would say um first exposure to music that was really different and out there in my mind that I loved and I would steal these cassettes from my dad in his little cassette player with the <laughs> fucking headphones with the phone Walkman. on them. Walkman. Uh I would I would take his cassettes of Pink Floyd. Oh yeah, no. Um, yeah. I remember I loved Pink Floyd and I liked listening listening to it because it sounded weird. Right. It sounded weird and different and you know that and I and I and I really liked it. Um and so that was that's like my first memory of of music and kind of being drawn to music is like my dad's Pink Floyd cassettes. Right. You right. Know? You know, okay. So <laughs> our guilty pleasure is that we watch The Mass Singer. Oh my god. And so suburban. So it, white. it really is. And Just it has it has Jenny McCarthy on the it. The most suburban white thing oh, we yeah. could do. And okay, so Jimmy? Jenny McCarthy who's she married to? Uh Mark or uh, no no no. Uh Jimmy Jen, Jenny McCarthy she's married to Wahlberg, Wahlberg brother. Not uh, Mark or no, the the other Darryl? Wahlberg. The, the uh, Wahlberg that's not the Marky Mark. So um, Donnie, Donnie Wahlberg. She's married to Donnie Wahlberg. Okay, all right. So I I don't have anything against boy bands. You know, I I I I, I don't. Okay, again, I, I will admit a couple, uh, a Backstreet Boys guilty pleasure of mine. Yeah, like yeah. Everybody. Right. And so, um, you know, what 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 I hate mm-hmm. is that it is a commercialization of music and that um, now what uh, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, 
Oh, you mean where it's like kind of that whole just industrial, like it's just like, it's like a, it's like a factory, like just shooting out the same. It is, it is industrial music, good looking um, Mm -hmm. people singing it, Yeah, you know. And you lose, you lose like the meaning, the heart, the like humanity. Yeah, of, like, and and I think this is where like metal and punk mm-hmm. really, really shine because really and truly, punk is a really big fuck you to society. Yeah, and everything. And I think metal does the same thing in a much more polished way. It, in a much more polished way, but I, what drew me to punk was just the sheer energy and the you sheer know, anger and the sheer fuck you society kind of thing. I think really it's, and I mean, this is going towards our genres of music that we favor, but it's really any kind of form of music where it's people just it, it is artists that are writing about whatever's meaningful to them or you know prevalent in their formal life i mean you know the rap artists i don't know about rap artists today because i don't listen to any of that shit but uh like of the early 90s you know talking rapping about police brutality life on the right. streets and it may sound you know, druggy and rapey and whatever, but they're rapping, they're, they're expressing their experiences and their frustrations and their, you know, their enslavement really, uh, right. to society that they're stuck in, you know, and, but you can also say uh, for our least favorite version of music, country, <coughs> 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 um, you know, but there are, you know, those artists in country that are there, you know, they're also writing from the heart and things that are meaningful for them. And I think that that it's when people are writing authentic art, you know, it's this authentic, not that, that corporate produced stuff, but you know, when it's, it's actual writers and musicians and when there's bands and people playing instruments and it's, you know, it's people just bringing their, 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 their hurt and soul i say loosely you know but you know that makes it that like that's what's i think that's the stuff that like gets people you know people yeah. can be fan and, boys and fan girls of backstreet boys and in sync but you yeah, know and, it's like what's really gonna get to the meat of a person you know right. what and, is really and i don't i don't want to say that like you know taylor swift is Irrelevant. She just shakes it off. <laughs> because she's not. I mean, and because, I mean, because she is irrelevant. She writes she her speaks, own music. She speaks to people. Yeah, she writes and, her own stuff. She can play and, the guitar. And that is great. And, and um, you know, but the problem is, is I think a lot of what you hear on the radio. It comes out superficial. Exactly. It comes out it become, superficial. It becomes superficial. And, um, and I think... This is the beauty of the 60s, was that there was a lot of protest music that happened. Um, This is the beauty of what rap is. Rap, uh, sure, there's a a lot of rapey shit. It's angry as fuck. Well, it's like metal. It's like, it's, it's, you you sense this frustration with society and with just everything. If you want to get a sense of where rap started, Mm -hmm. Public Enemy. Yeah. That's. The greatest concert I ever went to was a U2 concert. Public Enemy opened. Public Enemy. Uh, this is in Columbia, South Carolina, by the way. Public Enemy outshone uh, U2 in that in that show. And it was the greatest show I ever went to. Uh, Public Enemy in the heart of the Confederacy, where the yeah. state in which the American Civil War started. Yeah, they shot first. Um, they hung a KKK effigy from the highest point in the concert, and it was great to watch all of these white motherfuckers in this concert not know what to do. Oh, uh, They're like, I was just here for I, a Joshua Tree. Yeah. Uh, oh, yay! There's, there's an Irishman. He wears the glasses. Does look like bug eyes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, oh. the 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 butt glasses. So I mean, it was the greatest thing that you two 
and their management had public enemies. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Chuck D, Flav Flav, uh, you know, open up that show. Flav Yeah, and um, they actually, interestingly enough, had one of the members of The Clash actually oh. open before um, Public Enemy. And so it was, it was a three-group show. And what I really loved was that they they would sing a song. Everything was so seamless. And so they would sing a song, and they the bridge between songs has some sort of like musical bridge but it was seamless mm-hmm. like on the beat mm-hmm. and they immediately went into the next it, it was amazing musicians could produce that i know I'm just kidding. Yeah. um but you know i mean i yeah i mean punk and metal and rap they're all born out of this real fuck you to society because okay i mean it's easy to see the punk and the rap, fuck you. But you know, metal it is still pretty, metal is still a big fuck. Fuck you. Yeah, they're screaming at you. They're yelling at you. Well, but There's lots of. But it's not just that they're screaming and yelling at you. I mean, punk does that, but it, they just they're just more poetic about it. Yeah, it, <laughs> they're poetic and you know what they're saying, and you know the things that they're talking about. Uh, you know, like the joke is like, you know, okay, you know, when, when Liz starts playing her metal music, I'll like, uh, Satan music and you know, it's just, it's a, it's a joke, but you know, don't wait, wait, get out of here. Younger millennial, uh, Brandon, get out of here with your screamo, your emo. (laughs) I only take hardcore to a point. Yeah. um, New metal, get the fuck out. Uh, Kind of. So yeah, this, this is our discussion on music. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, you know, it, if you have a chance, check out some like real punk, you know, Black Flag, you know, anything that, um, yeah, anything that Circle Jerks, the Germs, yeah, Minor Threat. Uh-huh. Um, and Nickelback is not rock. Uh, <sighs> what's uh? <laughs> You know, even Fuck even Nickelback. My Chemical Romance. Even Nickelback is like, uh, oh, we did too much. Don't even mention Limp Bizkit to me. Oh, uh, I will murder you. Um, no, okay, okay. New Metallica. Fuck, fuck mm. off. New Metallica. Just stop. Just go back to old Metallica. It's fine. You don't have to reinvent yourself. You're perfect the way you were. Yeah, I, I I don't have a problem with Lincoln Park. Mm-hmm. As, especially when you look at some of the... Three like, out of... Uh, wait, hold on. Uh, never mind. <laughs> okay, I, I might be romanticizing it because... Um, uh, wait, I'm sorry. Did you bring up Lincoln Park? Yeah. Mm. Okay, I, I might be romanticizing it a little bit. Because of where, um, uh, because of what, you know, Chester did, um, you know, committing suicide and stuff yeah. like that. And, and that, I think that kind of like changes the way that you see a band, especially you start to reinterpret some of the, I mean, lyrics. there are real people. They are real people. Yeah. And so, um, I will add you. All right. I had their first album, but. Yeah, it's just too it's too catchy to be metal. It's rap. It's pop rap rock is what it is. It's well, pop, rap, okay, rock. okay. You know it's it, but let's define it as it is. I immediately have crawling in my skin, going like through <laughs> my skin now. Um. Oh, okay. I mean, they're just basically the same age. So. I mean, I'm not like if Lincoln Park would come to town, which they're not going to do now. But like if they if they did, it's not like I would go see them. Um, I wouldn't do that, um, but you know it's um. But if we can uh, bring back to life a couple members of Pantera, I'm there. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, sure, but the thing is, though, does that then like if if Kirk Cobain had not shot himself, mm. would Ooh, what would they be like? Would Nirvana now be Lincoln Park to you? No, no. 
And so... Never. I mean, yeah, they would probably enter a phase where they were turning out crap like Metallica uh, did, uh, you know, where they tried to keep up with the times and and lost themselves a little bit, but then they would probably revert back. But I don't know if I can see them actually doing that. They would probably actually, before they got to that point, break up. Uh, and then Kurt Cobain would start a side project uh, doing his own yeah. shit. Dave Grohl would probably end up still starting no, Foo Fighters. Fighters. You know, and so there would be a whole different dynamic. Yeah, so, I, I have to say I that... think more greatness would have come from Kurt Cobain not shooting himself than Kurt Cobain shooting himself. But at the end of the day, he shot himself. I mean, yeah, you know, there's I, nothing you can do about that. I, I cannot tell you. I, so, again, I was in Rochester, New York when I saw the video to uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit. And I was like, holy fuck. Holy it's fuck. In my head punk was back mm. punk was back and i was it's so grunge because it's in flannel so happy that punk had returned and you know just you know the bangs in front of the eyes and you know just the way that the cheerleaders did it with the anarchy sign mm-hmm. on their cheerleader outfi- yeah. outfit looking dead inside yes and you know i think that every punk will tell you that at least at some level they're just dead inside and and this was the just kind in this three minute clip well it's really what four and a half minutes um for smells like teen spirit um it just encompasses that Mm -hmm. and you know and and it's just the band playing and just the starting with the drums and then going right into the guitar you have you, you you have the cheerleaders, but then this is like at a high school, you know, Pepper battle Rally. of the bands, pep rally thing. Pep rally. And you have these fake <laughs> ass motherfuckers in the stands mm-hmm. that are just like, yeah, this is great. And all this kind of stuff. And, you know, just doing the, you know, the head banging and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, oh, it, it was... I was so excited with that video. I, you know, four minutes, four and a half minutes had just never excited me so much in the 1990s and early 1990s. And I went to Indiana Cyclotron facility and I actually got in a debate with um, this fellow person that was there about the genius of Kurt Cobain. And he was like, you know what? I read the lyrics and they're just simple. And I'm like, this is this the fucking genius of this. You don't, I mean, oh, and um, and and then he he actually went and listened to the music, and he came up to me later and said, "Yeah, this is just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. The simplicity of it, and and um, and all that. But we missed some aid stuff." I okay, so uh, going uh, to to chat here. Uh, Jack says he's too old for our bullshit. Uh, or well, actually, no, Brandon. No, Katie's but bullshit. Peter Paul and Mary though. Uh, Peter Paul and Mary, not too old for our bull. Well, I don't know a lot of Peter Paul and Mary, but uh, my mom loves Peter Paul and Mary, uh, and he says we even had an AIDS re- research sit in after the concert. And my mom goes, "Thank God for AIDS research. I took care of AIDS patients early on in the seventies, and I had no idea my mom took care of AIDS patients or before you had your heart shit was involved in anything to do with the heart. I thought you were always a neonatal nurse, mom. I thought I thought AIDS was in the eighties. Does she mean the eighties? Maybe uh, the eighties. You know, for for <laughs> okay. So now we're in. Well, I don't 80s. know. I mean, uh, okay. Peter Paul and Mary. I I love. Okay, wait. I I do. We have so much to unpack here. What's a Peter Paul and Mary song? Peter wait. Paul and Mary. <laughs> uh, Peter Paul and Mary are. When we did golf, we actually played one of those okay, songs. Okay, I just, what's one so, of the songs? Because Peter I think Paul I have Mary, them in my head, but okay. I want to make sure I'm thinking of the right. Peter, Paul, and Mary do like uh, uh, Puff the Magic Dragon. Puff so they're the doing. Magic Dragon. So they do, it, if I had a hammer. See. So they do a lot of folk. Okay, okay, okay. I wanted to make sure I wasn't compare, uh, confusing them with the Carpenters. No, God, no. Um, oh, no. Boy. So. Um, Peter, Paul, and Mary are like 1960s folk, really protest music. Yeah. And it, I mean, this was the height of like, kind it, of a, it really this is, is. This is like major protest culture. Yeah. And so um, P- Peter, Paul, and Mary really are a, 
you know, a fuck you to the 1950s. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what America should be. Yeah. And, you know, Vietnam is going on. Mm-hmm. You have, so you have a lot of like mm-hmm. Trump who wants to return to the 1950s, oh. but they only want to return to white 1950s. Women are like, we don't want to fucking vacuum in heels. Get the fuck out. But, but also it is like African Americans <laughs> and, yeah. you know, gay people. And we won't even discuss trans people because they don't exist. Um, in the 1950s. Never! This is a new invention to society. Yeah. And, um, and so the 1960s is a real repudiation of all of that. And so Peter, Paul, and Mary did this just phenomenal, you know, folk music. And I'm not a folk music fan right. by any stretch of the imagination, yeah. but there is, uh, there's Peter, Paul, and Mary. Um, there is, oh, fuck, it's, I can see his face. Um, Garfunkel? No, that's Sorry. later. This is in the '60s. It was Carpenters? Um, who? Carpenters. No, God, you know, just leave the Carpenters out of it. Oh, but um, his his problem. son was in the oh, Wallflowers. Uh, Wallflowers. Yeah, he. Wallflowers. Is that a? That was like uh, '90s. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> it's in the Wallflowers. Yeah. Oh, God damn it! Um, he's huge. He's huge. Has like this, like bushy. Black hair, uh, but anyway, um, you know, plays the acoustic guitar all the time. Uh, Dylan, Bob Dylan, yes, oh, and so just Bob Dylan. Thank you, it's thank you, Bob Federico. Dylan, so, uh, yeah, that was all just a repudiation of the 1950s, mm-hmm. and so, um, so you have this 1950s, I mean, excuse me, 1960s, and you know, flower power and all this kind of mm-hmm. stuff, and punk comes directly from that because it was a you know you flower people said that you were going to change the world and, and you all shit. and you all became executives on wall street and punk was like fuck you people follow fuck the money. you people follow the money and and so that's where you get the sex pistols that's where you get um you know Black Flag and and the Germs and and all of these the Ramones and all of these. I, I'm sorry, I don't know if you heard that over the microphone of our dog just gagging, but she is fine. Go away. I love you. You're cute. Yeah, and so I mean, yeah, Jack is right. Even in the uh, '70s and '80s, Peter Paul and Mary come to campus. They would bring extra police and for protests. Yeah. Um, because it, it was Peter Paul and Mary, though it's not my I like my it. way of protesting. I like how protest everything band. started out like nice sounding, and it was like, "Hey, everybody, come together!" Right. And then it was like, "Fuck you!" Yeah! <laughs> right, but you know what? <laughs> Like you're not doing anything. We get so frustrated that now people are just like screaming into a microphone. Like, right, can you not but understand us now? The, but the problem is, is that the protest becomes mainstream eventually, and so everything becomes mainstream. Yeah, and so eventually. okay. Let, let's be honest. In a silly kind of way, Blink One Eighty Two is a punk band, but it is kind of a popish punk it's band. Pop punk, punk band. <laughs> And, you know, Blink-182 going on tour now, by the way. Are they? Yeah, they're going on tour. Really? They're watching Wait, is it, original. Who is original it? Tom DeLonge that's obsessed with aliens? Yeah. The bassist is obsessed with UFOs? Yeah, and so they, they, they're they going on a world tour and, um, you know. We're... Are they going to bring their socks? <laughs> and so. Oh, no, they didn't have socks. That was Chili Peppers. They just had their guitars. Yeah, and so they. You know, they... No, that's, that's Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying Blink-182 just had the guitars. Yeah. They didn't wear socks. They didn't have the socks. Just their guitars slash bass yeah. slash drums. And so, um, it, 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 you know, the problem with with the problem with all of these protest things mm-hmm. is that the record labels, the record companies see it as, oh, shit, you know, people are buying into this, and, and they see dollar signs. Well, yeah, I mean, at and the end it, of the day... Uh, we're a capitalistic world. Yeah, and it's like it's all the, about that money. Um, it, it's like the Woodstock 2000 or whatever the it's fuck it was. That show. Which was very rapey and you know. And it just it, it really just uh, 
pure to early 2000s. Yeah, yeah. It was and just, so... Yeah, that's correct. That's correct of how but, society is. But I do think that there are certain bands that will... You, you're never going to get, um, like, the, uh, the record label that is going to buy... That's going to be doing, like, uh, Black Flag or or no fx um or some of your metal bands because it is metal just Blade records uh is one of them because it because, still yeah. is this is some of this stuff is just not something that's well, going to play well it's not going to be sony records it's going to be your well yeah ones. but you're not going look a radio station is not going to play a fuck you on their on their you um, can't on their say rotation. that over the radio. But even if it's not, because you know, let's be honest, punk bands and metal bands are fronted by really smart fuckers, and so they are really able to, if they wanted to, was be able to really, you know, disguise these lyrics. Uh-huh. And so, yeah, that radio is not going to play them. Yeah. Uh, Jack says his parents went to a Simon and Garfunkel and there was a spoken word poetry section that his mom said it was very evident that Simon hadn't cleared it with Garfunkel. <laughs> ah, funny. Yeah, well, you know, holy shit. I mean, what? <laughs> that's great. I mean, there's music plays a big part, I think, in your life and my life. Uh-huh. And we, we, sure, we don't listen to like, you know what's going on on the radio now. We have mm-hmm. we have our stuff that we listen to, mm-hmm. um, but this is, I think this is has directed us, um, mm-hmm. and um, you know this it has directed us in the way that we see the world, uh, the way that maybe we vote, um, and that you know, for me growing up in the South. Mm-hmm. Science is a big fuck you to the South because the South, to be honest, in the U.S. is very religious. Um, and what? Yes. Um, and you know, it's I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think that metal and and punk. If we hadn't had that in our lives, we we would not be who we are. I uh, mean, can you imagine? Not. Can you imagine? Like, would you be married to me if I was all into, you know, top 40 pop radio and and have that define who I am? I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> well, what's in the top 40 now? I guess it depends on... Uh... I mean, let's be honest. If, if we were playing, um, you know, golf with friends, we would be listening to the Decemberist all the time. And that's yeah, all that we'd be that's listening true. to. That's true. All the Decemberists... All the time. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So. <laughs> what, what a high in it? the sky af- hangover. This is high. Was. This is high in the sky. <laughs> yeah, there we go, Brandon. <laughs> I do actually enjoy it. The storytelling. Of that. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So why don't we call it? Um, since we have not talked about anything, anything. in astronomy. Dr- I, well, I tried to, guys. I tried to bring us into some semblance of astronomy, and it quickly devolved into non... Yeah, but, you know, um, you know, I, I, we, we lost a founding member of punk this weekend, and politics has um, made a statement that, you know, uh, rationality trumps, no pun intended, pun intended. Um, extremism. And um, on Tuesday, so it's been kind of an interesting Here in America. Week. But we will return to the astronomy in a few weeks. Yeah, December 4th. December Sunday, 4th? December 4th with Apollo 17. 17. The last of the man The mission. last of the Apollos. Never shall man journey to the moon. Ever again. So join us. Until and, uh, yeah. Artemis. Follow us on all the things at Drinky Cosmos on Twitter, Cosmos with Cosmos everywhere else. You can find us on uh, The Hangover only on YouTube, uh, but all of our other main episodes and The Shot with Cosmos Cosmos on uh, YouTube and any uh, podcast platform like uh, Spotify or Anchor FM. Uh, and we'll see some of you in a week. And I will take credit of liberalizing uh, my dad with my sister a little bit, although he's surrounded. He has no choice but to just kind of... <laughs> duck into the shadows. For everybody here in the U.S., have a great Thanksgiving. Yes. 
Have Outside a great Thursday Enjoy for everybody else. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Bye. We'll see you.